Play the game, don't get played by Worry about you, say fuck everybody He just a bitch, you behave right Nigga, speak up what you say about me I stand alone, hold my head proud Never react over dumb shit Just play the cut, let the bread flip Working with weight, I could deadlift Hustle is what I was bred with Give me that money, don't talk about it I don't do spots that get overcrowded My pussy came with the lowest mileage Biggest turn on is a hoe with knowledge That's the best thing for good economics Nigga be quiet, it says more Benjamin's always my escort I don't pretend, I just manifest Everything that I want comes forward My mind's been ran through a garden my heart's been conditioned by pain uh -huh. I cried out for strength and for wisdom Those were the lessons that came I trust my gut in all situations Excelling quiet the brain Some don't agree with my way Alright, so now now everybody up in this motherfucker It's time to work <laughs> Hey, that's your heart Oh, that, that, that paint right there? You giving it away? No, nah, hell no, nah, nigga, that's me Fuck out of here You giving any of your shit away? I might, I might swap you yeah. out, nigga I got a I got a naked woman on the you know what I'm saying that I painted you know what I'm saying even I'm I'm, I'm putting that joint up for three K because I ain't nobody want to buy it for the Bitcoin you did. Hey, I ain't mad at that shit. Hey. I ain't mad at that shit at all, bro. What's up? What's up? What's up, Bang Bang? Hey, hey, brother, what's good? What's good? Man, I can't call it, man. You know, just uh, just left a, a left a great podcast, man, with a cat named uh, Rob Boyd. Hey, it's, okay. we getting to it, man. Like, for real. Hey, everybody getting to it. I know everybody in this motherfucker getting to it. Got to, bro. No oh, shit. It's always a creator's me. Yeah. How how y'all been um enjoying y'all space, man? Like, I really like the the fact that y'all decided to like collectively bring it together. That that just make the force stronger, man. You know what I'm saying? Hey, bro. At the end of the day, like, I really don't know how this shit happened, bro. You know how I do, Ari. I thought mm -hmm. one day I was in a room talking my shit one day and told the nigga, don't at me. Yeah. This, 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 this nigga came out the back and said, yo, why the fuck would you at him? <laughs> like, why the fuck would you do that? Yeah. And uh, shit, that shit just took off, bro, in the room. Somebody hit in the chat like, yo, he said, don't at me, nigga. That shit spelled damn. I said, yeah, it's your motherfucking dude. Yeah. Yeah. That, that shit was that man. I, I tapped in after the after the Zoom and uh, mm -hmm. me and bro was like shit. They was loving the vibe, so yeah. Let's put it together. Oh uh, man, you know like I told Bang Bang, you know what I'm saying like when I saw that wolf and I, I'm like going back to that conversation that I had with um on Grace's documentary. I was like that that make you know that make a whole lot of sense. You know what I'm saying like to um. To bring that wolf up and instead of saying, oh, this the year of the wolf. No, this the decade of the wolf. And now this is the decade of the bear and, and really give some factual information because the people that you bring out, bringing together. And now you're talking about involving my son with that wolf book. Now you're talking about your daughter. It's like, man, this expands the territory. Absolutely. Now, now what we going to cook? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't get mad at what we bring for up now. Not at all, not at all, bro. And I'm, I'm I'm super happy that you even brought that to my attention, because my daughter loves to draw, bro. She loves that shit. She sends me shit all the time. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And um, I'm like, damn, why wouldn't I incorporate her into this shit? Because now, if she puts something together, anything I get off of of what we doing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you, you know, you got your wolf and sheep's clothing line. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a, I'm gonna make me a little. Some some type of bear something line, and whatever yeah. I get off that, fifty percent of that is hers. You know what I'm right. saying? Just throw right. that up for. Her. Yeah. So if she thirteen, by the time she eighteen, she gonna be straight. You that's, know what I'm saying? That's real investment. Hey, bang! You got what you on the iPhone? Yes, sir. Yes. You you can turn it sideways, and you gonna get that full spectrum, man. You know what I'm saying? So that way, cover. Yeah, for real. But give it together, give it together, man. Hey, bro, he hey, he he got the game. We 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 learning from you, bro. No, I'm it, right. I'm right. I'm right. Right. performance, but we out here though. Oh, listen, the foundation is here. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is going up like a basketball. You know what I'm saying? You can't do no more bounce up. So like, what we what we gonna do? I wanna I wanna come back on at times like, 
Like, what's hey, happening? Hey, listen, you already know. Yeah. That, that ain't even got to be spoken about. But yeah. shit, we, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get on more than a haircut, though. Listen, it's real talk. You think it ain't open? You, you need you need a bear and a wolf on your podcast. Oh, I'm saying you think it ain't what's open. Happening? What's pulling, happening? You pulling up? Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's without a doubt. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's it's so many different angles, bro, that we cover. The three, just the three of us alone. Like I did, you know what I'm saying? Like I did that that video wearing a shirt. Like, bro, it's time to eat. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Like I had, I, I ate earlier today. I ain't even eating a full meal. I'm like, no, motherfucker, I'm hungry. I gotta get, you know what I'm saying? I gotta get it. I can't but, be fucking satiated with no little nibbles, bro. Nah. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to go into hibernation in two motherfucking years. Yeah. I need to eat right now yeah. and make sure that I got shit where I'm still eating. When I go into hibernation, you dig what I'm saying? Yeah. It's hunting season. Yeah. That's exactly what I said, and don't at me, nigga. Yeah. I keep trying to tell these motherfuckers, man. We didn't already got started. We already underway, man. We just, oh. we just, we just dive right the fuck in, man. What's up, man? Shit. Um. Hey, Wolf. What? 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 You, you got a question for Ari that you want to jump off with? I, I, I would say I got too many to just limit it down to a number because the man got so many jewels and he's such a. A library of information, bro. You know, but yeah, just you know, I got some things I could throw at him, but all right, hold, 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 hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, right? I'm gonna go ahead and do this, right? <laughs> so, so Ari the architect, right? I know we we spoke and shit, and you said this is your first official interview, huh? Yeah, man. No, 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 nobody want to interview my nephew beard ass, bro. They be like, hey, hey, bro, <laughs> you, you, you a motherfucking lot because you, you, you right here with us right now. Yeah, we, we, we clearly need that info. Yeah. So um, let's let, let's talk about it. So you originally from Memphis, right? Man, the home of the of the tiger, the home of the grizzlies. You know what I'm saying? Like the, who? the home of the grizzlies, the Memphis grizzlies. Yeah. Me? Yeah. The grizzlies? Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, me? My motherfucking bear, nigga. <laughs> For sure, man. Hey. What's that like over that way, man? Tell us about it. Man, it's um. You got you got a city that's is is really tribal, you know what I'm saying? But we don't we don't necessarily realize it because we quote unquote on top of each other. You know what I'm saying? One of the one of the main dances is called a gangster walk. And we get in the circle when we were in the club, we get in the circle, going round and round. But people don't know that the we are the natives to the land in the city. Right. They got schools called So um, in a, in a nutshell, the energy that's in the room, the energy that's going on. Hold on, hold on, Ari. Uh, um, you have froze up for a little second. Um, just run that back for real. real quick. So what I was saying is, we have we have tri It's a tribe. You know what I'm saying? It's a tribal city. That's number one. So it's like the roots of the city, like how they got that they got that that show called P Valley. Like Chuck Elisa is a real place. So it's it's we we really getting fucked over because it ain't really gonna be talked about in the next twenty years. They are gonna think it's some old fruitcake ass shit going on, but it's like, nah, you talking about the people that I'm from? Where when we go in the club and we gangster walking and we doing we getting booked per se. Hey man, that energy that's in the room, we can blow some shit up and we can fuck some shit up. But it's a blue collar town. We we know how to work. We know how to grind. So, me moving to a city like Atlanta, it's like, bro, like, we don't, we know how to work. We know how to get it. We don't know a lot of fugazi or the, or the fake shit. Not saying Atlanta is fake. Don't get it twisted. But when we, the way we move and we, and we do things, don't, don't get it twisted. I ain't coming to take over the shit. I'm just coming to take my shit. I'm still going to respect you for what you do. I can't do nothing but that. But like... You got to give me credit for what I'm doing, for the grind that I'm about, and for who I am and what I stand for. I got nothing but love for this city, but it's like my city don't get enough credit for the grind that we give to the world. Number one distribution capital of the world, but like we are who we are. We do what we do from music to entertainment 
You know what I'm saying? I've got some of the greatest people in the world out here, man. What would you say, real quick, man, is like one of the biggest influences for you coming from that culture mm -hmm. as far as musically? Like, who who did you grow up listening to? Because I, I, I love that Memphis sound. I could throw yeah. something with uh the six, triple six, and project, and you know, so on. Uh, what, uh, what was my man's name? Uh, uh, I got you. I know what you're gonna say. I know. I already know what you're gonna say. So, so for um, for me, it's a it's a couple of different groups. So, three six is like a foundation for for everybody from Memphis. Even the fact that like when we go on to church, and you know the folks like, nah, you can't listen to that shit. Yeah, Juicy J folks are preachers. You know what I'm saying? So it's like if we fuck with three six. That's a foundation. It's tribal. It's the, the, the melodic uh, songs and the way he come across, that's what it is. Then you got a ball MJG, you got the you got the pimp and the gangster, really. And really, it's just gangster, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's gangster music that really didn't get, get support from the town. You got to shout out DJ Squeaky. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You got to shout out uh, Player Fly. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Like, Player Fly is one of the major influences that I see from my city. And I and, and it's just me being real with me. I feel like he influenced cats like Ti. No, you know no, what I'm saying? Okay. And no, not no, no. Speak, speak, speak on that for me though. So 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 like when I when I saw uh, I remember when I saw Ti like for the first time with like the Rubber Band Man and like that uh I'm serious album. He was in the tank top. For me, that was that was play a fly whole thing because it's he from South Memphis. He represent Funky Town, you know what I'm saying? It's just like he grew up with my uncle, and so I'm like, I'm, I'm seeing the influence, the rawness, the greed of the grind. Play a fly, just a local legend, you know what I'm saying? He, had, I say, a national le legend, but the internet gave him some international bang. Mm -hmm. Ti is an international cat because of Atlanta, and not taking away from his his culture, his music. That is trap music, you know what I'm saying? But I got to take my hat off to to play a fly, you know what I'm saying? Like, thanks for doing what you did, you know what I'm saying? Cause- No doubt, can I, I can back on that? Salute to fly, man, for sure. So, and rest in peace to Miss Mad, that was my home girl. Yeah. She, um, she did a lot with fly, man. Shout out to that whole moment. I'm glad you spoke on that, cause that's, that's real essence. That, that fly for me, when I moved to Atlanta, that's when I got turned on to that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so, so about Wolf, Wolf, where you from? Detroit. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, There's a lot of similarities that I hear from Detroit and Memphis too. That's what, that's what I'm that's what I'm starting to hear. Ain't none of us from where we actually at right now. Yeah. So you want you want to speak on Detroit a little bit, Wolf? Because I don't know a whole lot about Detroit. I don't think I ever been to Detroit. It's it's just not one of them tour spots, you know. It, it, it's an industry town. It was brought up on man and just fell into a high. You know what I'm saying? With the whole Reagan administration, and back in the day, we had several movements that was going on as far as drug cartels. That's what well, a lot of people don't know. That's where the movie New Jack City was actually based on a real project in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And um, that whole operation was a real operation that existed for real that was built by the Chambers brothers, you know, but um, that's that's one of them unspoken things, you know, but yeah, it's just, it's, it, it, it ain't really nothing to say other than Motown, you know, one of the positive things to come out of there. And, um, you know, a few other people, but man, it's so wrapped up in, in, in darkness and violence, man. It's never left the top three as far as the murder capitals, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And and that's from the time I've been born and, and beyond that, you know what I'm saying? And I grew up watching a lot of that, man. And, you know, suffered a lot of murders and incarcerations in my, within my family with the uh, male members. You know, even my mama was a, a reputable face out there. You know, she was the original Bang Bang. That's mm. that was the first ones to get it in. My mama was like an enforcer for the family. You know what I'm saying? When oh, she wow. got, it, it didn't matter who it was. They hit my mama, the little red lady pulling up with all the smoke. Mm. That's, so, that's, you know, that's wild, bro. I grew up terrified, man, because my mama was active. So, you know, I'd be in the car with her, man, and like, she don't give a fuck who, what, if you disrespect, she, she hopping out. And I'm in the back seat, like mama get in the car, like terrified. So you know what I'm saying? Like a nigga grew numb, you know what I'm saying? Like just, 
you know, but yeah. I wanna I wanna I wanna add like uh Tom Ski Mask with somebody else that I can say was a legend. And it's a group called Iron Mike Coalition that like they was my Wu Tang, you know what I'm saying? Cause it was so many of them. They had uh producers, MCs, artists, tattoo artists. Like they was they was my Wu Tang per se from Memphis. And they don't they don't get enough credit too. You know what I'm saying? They was they legends. They brought the hip hop, they brought the hip hop perspective and they coined the term Memphis. And that's like I was I was rhyming on the scene doing music with them dudes. What's you know it all about? Rolling money and making running over hoes. Plus staying ten toes down, keeping my ass in and forever hustle. Hey, I know Shags. about Shags. It. making easy money, pimping. We ain't gonna say the hoes, but you know what I'm saying. Holy, and you know what I'm saying. Nah, but it is making easy money, pimping hoes and style. That's what it's known as. A lot of people don't know. Like a lot of people moved from the Mississippi and the Memphis and went to the Californias. And, you know what I'm saying. A lot of the game came from really the South, man. But, you know, they, it was Memphis. I mean, it's like Memphis and Mississippi to Chicago. Like Snoop from Mississippi. Most people don't know that. Snoop Dogg. But, oh, hell no. Nah, I ain't know that shit. Yeah. Brandy, all of them, yeah. They from Mississippi, man. Originally. Wow. Um, yeah. I mean, y'all, y'all already know. Um, I'm from Jersey. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. We, uh, yeah. you know, we... It's another, I mean, pretty much same story, bro. Like, small town, people people don't really know a lot about New Jersey, but um, it, it's crazy as hell. I mean, everybody know New Jersey drive, and there's still a lot of cars, but the murder rate is crazy. Um, and it's a lot of stuff going on in Newark because we got one of the biggest ports in the world right there, Port Newark. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's millions of containers coming in and going out. So it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of stuff, you know, I mean, shipping over to Africa. That's why they steal a lot of cars because they, they ship them over to Africa, and get Great. Uh, a bag for that, and they come back over and it's, it's big business. But um, we're not going to talk a lot about that. But right. now, now we, we, um, we, we all talked about the music and where I'm from, where you from, where everybody's from. Tell us a little bit more about your music. Well, um, like I said, as far as just, my music came from that sound like play or fly. Like that's a that's a bass for me. Al Green, you know what I'm saying? You got it really the whole three six mafia, you know what I'm saying? Like that whole, that whole that, that rawness, that raspiness is coming from that Tupac, you know what I'm saying? And then Outcast, Ice Cube, you know, it's just a it's a real pot of gumbo that I mix into my music. But it's just more or less, you know, just Everyday life growing up in Memphis, doing business with my pops, you know what I'm saying? Like lessons learned from up and down, started out from poetry, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just been a slow walk from and I'm gonna tell you one more person, man. Um uh, D'Angelo. D'Angelo, okay. I got my writing style per se from from D'Angelo. My cousin was putting me on some shit called Mensa. It's like the, the mind books and shit. Mm-hmm. Like I can get my, I can put myself in a in a situation, but I can take myself out of the motherfucker too. So that's where that's where that poem. I got a poem called Basketball, where it's like, what fuck thing I'm talking about a woman. My my concept came from uh that Brown Sugar song from D'Angelo. I ain't know he was talking about some weed. <laughs> you know Let me tell you about this girl. Maybe I shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I met her, and her name was Brown Sugar. See, we be making love constantly. That's why my eyes are shade, blood burgundy. The way that we kiss is not like any other way that I be kissing when I'm kissing. What you listen, won't you listen? Brown sugar, babe, I guess high off your love. Don't know how to be. I'm like, bro, how, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you formulate this shit? You know what I'm saying? So it was my cousin. Um, he just wound it, he winded up challenging me to a point to where I couldn't, I couldn't stop writing. I was just being creative, pain, doing all kinds of shit. And it's just like, my writing just took off from there, man. You know what I'm saying? Got a chance to, uh, I was doing security work in Memphis and I wound up writing, or really coming up with this chant called Grit Grind that was played in the uh, arena back in Memphis at the FedEx Forum. And um, my producer name is uh, Brandon Emotel. He a Stax baby, you know what I'm saying? 
So my homeboy, man called Hawk, he wound up having a, a CD with a bunch of fucking records on there. My homegirl had already wrote a song to it. I had, you gotta think, I hadn't heard the rap record yet. I'm just in in the work, uh, at work, doing security, talking about riding through the city lights. Grizzly, like, I say, what up, homeboy? I say, it is what it is, right? Grit, grind. I'm repeating that shit. And I'm like, damn, shit hard. Talking to the bread man, because he coming in. I'm like, man, I got this idea, whoop the whoop. Homeboy give me the CD. I hear it. I'm like, oh, this got to be it right here. I'm one of the first cats on the scene, on the underground, that get played in the fucking arena. So now, like, the last 10 years, all the homies been performing in the motherfucker now. And I'm just like, you got to kick, somebody got to kick the dough in. So it kind of like, that put me in the mind frame, like, I may not get the reward for what I do up front. I ain't worried about it. If my homies get the Grammys, like I got some little homies doing music, got nephew doing music out in Cali and shit. If they get the win, man, I'm cool. I ain't, I'm not tripping. I'm doing my job. You know what I'm saying? I done done my job. I'm showing the seeds and I'm, I'm showing them like, hey man, go study right and go listen to these folks. Go go put in the work. Go get on your publishing. You are the fucking industry. Fuck the middle man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm telling them. Get the bag. You know what I mean? So, you know, that in a nutshell, that's, that's what it is, bro. That's yep. that's that's super big, bro. So, yeah. so you 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 found uh you know some type of success while you was in Memphis yeah. uh, as you just spoke of. So what ended up bringing you uh, to Atlanta? Man, a uh, couple of things. Uh, so it's it's you know piggybacking off of the music. I had this uh one of my homeboys is a poet. He goes by uh uh. His name is Tim, T. Remedy. So he gave me some ideas on my album and it's called the Manefa Project, which means eternal beauty. That's just, you know, Memphis means, Memphis means city of the dead. And I was like, my OG was like, can these dry bones live again? That was like the whole, plat, you know, the, the whole platform. And the album was built off of the atomic bomb. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the fragments and the foundation that they built part of the atomic bomb and like, I think it was like Knoxville and Philly and certain other places. So my whole thing was when you, when you got the album, you're going to get some from it in, in time and specs of time when you listen to it. So I wound up, you know, cutting hair and, you know, getting into barber school, doing music, doing film work and all kinds of shit, going through a relationship. That shit wasn't working. And it got to a point my brother was living in Atlanta already a couple of years, maybe four or five years at the time. And he was grinding. He was making a name for himself. He was doing his shit. And you know what I'm saying? I'm frustrated and shit. And he hearing the frustration because I, da I uh, damn it got shot up and shit. My brother, like, um, I had called him at the time. Or he hit me on the line at the time telling him what's going on. And after that, he was just like, bro, um, everything you doing in Memphis, Man, you can do it in Atlanta times 10. So I'm letting you know here, here go the opportunity. You can stay where you at. You keep going through the same vicious cycle of you talking to folks and they in the same position. Or you can get the fuck away and see the rest of the world. So, you know what I'm saying? I got I to gotta hats off to my brother because this the same motherfucker that I'm, I'm watching do what he do. And he making a name for himself and, and niggas sending me messages and photos like, bro, you see your bro? I'm like, nigga, that ain't shit. Just imagine what the motherfucker do in the long run. You know what I'm saying? And it was, I guess it was just built off of him saying, man, you could say woulda, coulda, shoulda, or you could do something. And I was like, I'm finna do something. And my OG was like, hey man, I bet you a hundred dollars you gonna stay, you gonna come back. And I'm like, man, fuck you, dog. Like, I'm gone. I ain't coming back. I ain't coming back to the motherfucker. Not saying that I ain't at times, you know, like want to go back and, and get back and, and be on the same old bullshit. But I'm like, right, man, I can't do that shit. This, you know what I'm saying? It's been a blessing. My brother laid out a carpet. He like, look, listen, nigga, like get your get your feet dirty, bro. Like, here go the carpet. Not saying fuck up shit, but like come out here with an open mind. You know, don't don't really tell niggas you doing music and shit like that. Like, get to your shit and grind and get to it, man. And Came here doing customer service, man. I'm here today. 
because of that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so so Wolf, what what brought you to Atlanta? Really, man, I was in so much trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mom Deuce had got to a point. You know what I'm saying? I left. I left young, man. But probably about seventeen, right? And I was just coming back to try to get her a peace of mind. I had been back with her probably about three, four months, you know what I'm saying? Now I've been gone off and on since 13, you know what I'm saying? Cause we be getting into it and shit. Mm-hmm. And she was just like, so frustrated. She just had family members reach out to me and get with me to come sit down with her and talk to her. And, um, you know, I, I ain't want to do it, bro. Like I, I ran from that shit a couple times, you know what I'm saying? And it took me to like, when I was like 17 to come sit down with her, man. Hmm. And she like, you know, she just hearing so much, man. She like, baby, like, listen, man, just go and live another life. You know what I'm saying? Go live another life. Like you tripping, you know what I'm saying? Now mind you, her house thing got hit. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I got way too much drama, you know what I'm saying? But, we ain't looking at it like that. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, it was like a second nature, you know what I'm saying? It's like regular, you know what I'm saying? And she like, nah, this, nah, you tripping. Like, we didn't lost this one, we didn't lost that one, this one locked up. She was like, you know what I done been through? And she broke down, though, and it hit me another type of way. Cause yeah, I'm going through the same shit she going through. I'm the one at these funerals too, you know what I'm saying? And not to, not to get into no extra personal shit, but some of them devs did some detrimental damage to me, dog. You know what I'm saying? They right. flip flip my mind state. You know what I'm saying? And I got on some nut shit, boy. Like, you know. So a couple family members had to come sit me down. Like, hey man, really go chill, man. Go talk to your mom. I went and talked to her. She had arranged the situation for me to come and kick it with my family out here. You know, so I came out here and everybody thought that was going to be like the thing. And it wasn't the thing. It wasn't Detroit. It was me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What it all came down to, it wasn't Detroit. It was me. You know what I'm saying? You're going to create your environment wherever you at. I just, I wasn't to the level of maturity yet to wrap my mind around what I was exposed to and what I was experiencing. And I didn't know no other way to respond to it other than what I seen the normal response was in my culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so that and brought I, me here, man. I, I could definitely oh. dig that. It sounds like, um, I mean, cause I, I was a lot of the same way. I didn't really get along. I, I was raised in a house with five women, bro. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, without a man that, really show me what to do or tell me what to do. I got to walk to school every day. I know what I see. I know what I'm walking by. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and at a point, the the trauma of, of your environment, it becomes tradition because it, it seems to be generation after generation of people doing the same things. You know what I mean? So I can, I can completely identify with that. I was out of the house early. Um, I just never went back. I couldn't. Me and my mother really still don't get along to this day. Um, I, I love her to death. You know what I'm saying? That's my mother. I'm always going to love her. You know what I, you know what I mean? But um, it, 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 these environments are creating really toxic, tragic situations um, that we kind of need to build on. And um, that's, that's leading me to what's going on with you right now, Ari. Um, you got the uh, you got the barbershop popping, right? Yeah. So tell tell me what's going on at the barbershop and um, how that kind of how you how you kind of working that and, and trying to make that uh, a difference maker in the community to change circumstances and, and affect people's lives. Man, um, it's I gotta I gotta start with like I gotta start with two things short, but going to it. One thing is um 
my cousin initially, because he was cutting my hair, you know what I'm saying? One of my one of my first cousins, Cody. Um, he came to me one day and he was just like, uh, you um you ever thought about cutting hair? Cause he knew I was drawing and shit. I'm talking to him. We reconnecting because it was like when my granddad died, this nigga standing under the light, and I remember that shit. And then when his brother died, it was the same fucking thing. And you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, bro, like, you know, if you can draw a straight line, you can cut hair and come to find out from that conversation, shit, my granddaddy did hair, and then my grandmama did hair. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this shit didn't make this some shit I tapped into the DNA. The other point is, like, I'm working in my pop's restaurant and shit, and I stopped eating pork and shit, and I, I'm, I'm having to do something, and... The symbolism of Obama is going to the White House. And I'm like, man, I got to do something to take care of my family, get my own money and get my own bag. Me and my pop said it. And I, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, it wasn't no beef, but it was just more or less like I'm looking to learn. And it was kind of like sure a little bit, but it was like, all right, I started selling these Obama stickers. I forgot who was, who had, who, who gave them to me, but this is how I get a barber school. You know what I'm saying? And I'm taking also taking the presence of me fucking up in college. And now my pop sit me down saying, like, man, you got to work for free and getting game from my, my, my uncles and they partners and shit. And I'm like, damn. So, you know, speaking in terms of the barbershop now, I tell my clients, like, it's more than a haircut every time they sit in my chair. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't been through enough bullshit from niggas getting killed young age, losing a lot of homies, losing adults, losing elders and shit, like every year. So when somebody sits in my chair, whether they're going through something or not, just like the pain behind me, this transmutation. If you're going through something, hey man, come and sit down, come and get that shit off you. Let's talk about it, whatever going on in your world. So me going to school and me learning that, hey man, the barber was the preacher, the barber was the blood letter. The barber was a psychologist. The barber was a therapist. The barber was a network. The barbershop is the community. The barbershop sets the tone. The barber, the barber helps you get pussy. The barber helps you look good when you go to the club. You know what I'm saying? Like understanding those different fractions. It's like, damn, like my presence really hold weight. You know what I'm saying? I might not get what I expect up front. But now the expectation is, hey, man, I got to pay my barber more because, man, this motherfucker just told me about the stock market. This motherfucker just told me about some business ideas and opportunity. This motherfucker just got me to write a book. Not, not only write a book, but he done gave me a book to check out. So now we building on salesmanship and building a man up or the woman to be, you know what I'm saying, in a position of strength and power. So when you walk out, I represent you in here and wherever I go, but now you represent me by what you're rocking on your head. You know what I'm saying? What's in your head too, bro? Not to cut you off, bro, but that was like one of the silver linings and all of that greatness in my life, right? Growing up, because <clears throat> that was where I was able to have that outlet and talk with other men that was on another level for me, you know what I'm saying? That could give me insight into different shit and they were seeing what I was going through and all that, man. But one of my, my, my barber in particular, you know what I'm saying? The conversations that he would hold with other individuals is what really was the catalyst for the way that I think now today still even now, like, you know what I'm saying? Like to look at outside the box shit, same shit that brought us to the, post-Trump secret society, which we're going to expound on that in a little bit too. Absolutely. But you know what I'm saying? You, that's, it's so detrimental, that role, man. You know what I'm saying? In that barbershop, because like I said, bro, that's that's one of the founding elements that glue, that kept my glue together, man, when I was going through what I was going through, just obtaining them conversations, you know what I'm saying? And being able to reflect back on them good jewels, bro, like some of that shit you be dropping on the society, but I just wanted to piggyback on that, bro. And hold on, let me, let me, if I can, let me tap in on that. Like yeah. I said, I grew up in a, uh, in a in a house with five women, so it was, it was a lot of things going on in that house that I didn't really understand. And there was a lot of things going on with me it's that me. they couldn't really understand. Oh. The 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 one place I could go was to the barbershop. shop. 
I got to yeah. sit in there around men. You know what I'm saying? They always had the game on. They they was talking shit, just mm-hmm. doing man shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, that it, it felt safe. It yeah. felt comfortable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I I get to be around people that's like me. I'm hearing things that, that I'm kind of thinking about, but can't really ask them at home or don't feel comfortable asking them. You know what I mean? Um, now, I did do my due diligence on you, Ari. <laughs> I, I did do my due diligence, right? So um, you had uh, Robert Purvey on there Man. Uh, the other day, right? And um, Ooh, he, he, he said something that, that, that really stuck with me. Okay. Um, he said that the barbershop was like the country club of, of, of the community. It is. Tell, tell me, tell me how you feel about that, and um, explain a little bit of of uh, I know, I know, we all just talked about it, but what what, what do you think he exactly meant by that? So you know, and it's kind of like what I was going to add to. So you know how um, Ti labeled his music as trap music. Yes, sir. But, but the originality came from Good and All talking about the trap shit. Like that country club feel for me is the space that I got is my trap. Whichever way you turn, I'm gonna trap you in that motherfucker. And I'm gonna sell whatever I need to from that shit. Meaning, like, shit, it might be some dope soul that's certain barbershop. Not saying that it is in mine. It might be some shampoo or some shit. It may be some, you know what I'm saying, some game soul. So, like, the country club feel, meaning that one of the barbers may be able to network with you and tell you something. Just like if you go to the country club, like the golf club with these with these folk, you know what I'm saying? Like in Atlanta, the players go to the strip club, just like cats go to the golf course. So, you know what I'm saying? In the country club, you might run into a producer and you got a you got one of the newest artists from wherever he's from that walk into your, you know what I'm saying, to your chair. You did. You got somebody with a clothing line, they might come and sit down. You might have an NFL player. Come and sit down in this country club. So the feel that you get is upper echelon from a mentality standpoint in the country club. Because to me, it's, it's when, when he said country club, I thought about the value that is brought in the shop, not just by me, but the owner too. The owner has the privilege and the right to set the tone and the mind frame in that country club. So, you know what I'm saying? In a, in a nutshell, I just feel like he was he was on point and he squared up when he said, hey, this is a country club because some 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 conversations that's off limits like religion and politics. Sometimes that shit don't come up and we're gonna have a heated discussion and debate about it. So that in this country club, like this is where we come to a to a to a convening moment where it's like, if you can't express yourself, then you really don't need to be here. But you know, in this country club. Oh man, look, we're going to have edit on so many different topics that, hey man, you might not even have with your mom or your dad or your partners. Facts. But you might share some shit with me that you don't even share with the rest of the world. You know what I'm saying? I, I completely dig that. I appreciate that answer too. Yeah. Bear, what like we that. looking like on time, Bear? Um, shit, we, we just we just going to let this thing ride out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we Right now, we um probably at about 40 minutes. I am. We we about forty minutes. Ah, it's, it's it's light though. It's light. Like I said, I did my due diligence, right? Hey, so again, uh, I heard you say something else um about uh rappers, especially young rappers. Yeah, yeah. So so I I need your thoughts on pride versus hip hop versus the youth. Pride. Mm. Mm. And you can answer that however you want to. It's an open-ended uh, question, brother. It, it is. It's kind of like that, that uh like how Rob Rob Robert Purvin was saying he, he called it a goat, greatest of his or her time. You know what I'm saying? G O H T. G O A T. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, that that pride thing for me is what I what I hate. As a as an older cat, looking at some of the cause the the uh, the older cats call me the young dude, and the young young people call me the older cat. So it's like 
I'm the bridge. I'm I'm the bridge in order to connect. And, 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 and football, they call it a tweener. A, a, tw- a tweener. So I'm a yeah, tweener. You're a tweener. So it's like, <laughs> you know, when I think about when I think about pride, it's like I'm hearing the youngest call themselves the goat before they even become a kid. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, bro. Um, man, you know, like you got you got the cameras on you when you 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 showing all of your game. Like, why you why you showing why you giving all your goddamn game away before you really step up to the plate? Like, why don't you take the people on the journey? But that's kind of like the thing of you got rappers and you got MCs. The longevity of a rapper is like three months. The longevity <laughs> Talk of about it. Lifetime. And I'm not, I'm not knocking a, you know, a cat that calls itself a rapper, but it's like, it's codes, it's messages as, as, a, as a person that's on the mic that you got to give. And there's some rappers that's got longevity. You know what I'm saying? But like, Pride is pride comes and a downfall come with it. You know what I'm saying? And not and not not speaking down on this situation with and I, I don't I don't have really like the fortitude to speak on the situation with Lucci, but it's kind of like it's kind of hard for me. My heart go out to whatever he he experiencing right now. Like right. you was just on top yesterday, and the next day, you know what I'm saying? You, you hit it hard, but like where 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 is the guy within the music to, 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 to show you? Like my OG said to me, he said, um, the seeds of destruction are deeply planted in the hip hop. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Say that one more time for me, all right, that's right. The seeds of destruction are deeply rooted in the hip hop, meaning like, hey man, you know, I can't go to LL Cool J. I can't go to Cal. I I can, but I don't. I say I don't go to LL Cool J. I don't go to KRS One. You know what I'm saying? And get the game from this dude. But the white boys or whoever will go to Willie Nelson and sit down with the motherfucker and get all the game from, him and get all the direction from. Him. You know what I'm saying? Man, fuck LL. He ain't doing nothing. But LL done lasted this long as an MC. He got enough game to give you that's gonna last in your relationship at home more than that music industry gonna give you. Right. You did what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like it's a vital role that we play because a lot of these dudes don't have men to listen to or they have a lot of yes men around them. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's my take. Cause it's in the midst of it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fugazi shit in the world. So, you know what I'm saying? A young Atlanta dude, but. I ain't, I ain't here to finesse a motherfucker. I'm like, I'm going to keep it real and keep it raw and let the chills fall where they may, man. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that's why I appreciate everybody that's in, in this room right now because I know ain't none of us pulling no motherfucking punches. We ain't here to make you feel good. I, I, I ain't why? trying to, you know what I mean? I ain't trying to, you know what I'm saying? Why, 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 why motherfucking, why fit in when you can stand the fuck out? You know what hey, I'm man, saying? That's first and fucking foremost. And second of all, it, it's it's some shit like like I don't know if y'all seen that I'm I'm pretty sure y'all did but Lil Gotti said some nut ass shit at least in my opinion and that's in my own humble fucking opinion and they can say yo I don't I don't like don't put on on none of them old ass beats if you want me to freestyle I don't know no Biggie or Tupac lyrics and none of that shit if I want to just do some turnt shit where I just be like yeah da 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 yeah da 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 yeah I could do that yeah you can. And that's fine, bro, if that's your lane. If you know that's your lane, then stay the fuck in your lane. Mm-hmm. Now, and, and, and he was talking to, I think he was talking to Joe Button when he said that, and Joe, Joe took offense. Mm-hmm. And I get Joe. I know Joe. You know what I'm saying? I've met Joe a few times. Jersey City cat. Jersey City and Nook is right next to each other. So I dig where mm-hmm. he was coming from. We also, like, kind of around the same age. I respect lyricism. I, I respect yeah. storytelling. I, I I respect somebody because at the time when I was growing up listening to music, I wasn't listening to it so I could diddy bop. I was listening yeah. to it like, oh shit, that nigga put words together in a manner that I can't do it. At least not yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It 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 was it was it was a it was a it was an art form. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He took his time to do that. He created it. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a storm. 
It was yeah. a masterpiece. You know what I'm saying? It was like fucking Picasso with a pen. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, now it's, it's kind of like, hey, I just want to dance and shit. Like, cool, bro. It's funny. It's funny. It's funny that you say that. Like, and no, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even gonna piggyback off of, off of Yachty because you know what I'm saying. He said what he said. It's kind of yeah. like, kind of like Adam. Fuck it. Yeah, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a mumble rap. It's like if this is how you communicate, that's how you communicate, bro. Like I don't expect nothing from you. It's kind of like a bubble. I I call that shit bubble gum rap. The next person gonna do the same thing, so that's easy to mimic. Man, my pops always taught me to be a fucking trans stuff. Wherever you go in the world, know somebody. So if my OG tell me to dare to be different, that's what the fuck I'm going to do, especially when I see the so-called Caucasian or so-called white boy. Now he out here rapping and he's saying words and niggas bobbing their head to it. How is it that the soulless people got the soul now? Uh-oh, we just went somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Lane change. So it's like, and I'm not, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm not saying that cats like can't have soul with the music that they're doing, but like here it is, the people that generated and created this wordplay and were using this foundation to build words and roadblocks like a Rakim. Why not? Why not? Why why not get a Rakim on the song to help you do what you do? Why not? Why not have a Rakim as the executive producer just so he can get a check? Why not give um DJ Cool Herc a dollar? On his, his cash out to say, man, we appreciate for we appreciate you for what the fuck you did, and also piggybacking off of Yadi. Like, at what point did you go back and study the history of this shit so you won't, so you can keep what it is to be going forward, so you won't get fucked in the game? Like Jay said, I'm overcharging niggas for what they did to the cold crush. That part, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot when it comes to that, man. A lot of these dudes ain't raised the same way that we was. And I, I don't, I can't expect them to have the same foresight in the situation. Like some of these dudes ain't never had no guns pulled on them or been in situations like <laughs> I have, or, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, hey bro, like you ain't had to, you ain't really had to live through that, bro. And I can tell you that. And I will say this, man, just to just to throw a little piece in on that. I'm I'm actually happy. For, um, to some degree that is the way that it is. You know what I'm saying? That a lot of these cats not having to experience these type of things, you know what I'm saying? But on the flip side, it's, it's taken away from their character because they don't want to listen to nobody and they so drugged up, you know what I'm saying? See, it'll be, it'll be perfect if all of the, cause like when we was on the music, when I was young and we was wilding out and shit, we throw that six on. Yeah. We throw some, we throw some wild shit on, and we on your ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't dancing. We yeah. was on your ass. You know what I'm saying? And we, <laughs> right. We, we we vibing out to that. So I'm I'm happy that you know what I'm saying. Like this generation has at least come to that point to where it ain't. But it's I mean it still gets smoky. We all understand right. that. But at least like a large majority of them is on some like you know not so serious shit. But we need them to be serious on another angle though. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we trying to bridge a gap. How can we do that? Uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to let you go first, Ari. Go ahead. So I, I, how, I, how I bridge the gap is I listen, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like I got two, er, two ears and one mouth. You know what I'm saying? So it's like my, my OGs was listening to me. A lot of times they wouldn't. They didn't really give a fuck to listen. They was, they was dropping gems, and I didn't know that I was gonna be in a position to where I'm I'm the one that's listening and I'm dropping gym. You know what I'm saying? So like I feel like that's 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 one way. I also feel like meet meet the youngins, like meet them where they at. Like I can't I can't expect them to to, to um to 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 drive in a foreign wheel and you coming fresh out the gate. You know what I'm saying? Like to me you gotta build your way up to it or you're going to come tumbling down in three months. You dig what I'm saying? And also, like, like my OG did to me. He was he was telling me about that nigga Takashi way before that shit. He was like, that nigga the feds. He was like, that nigga there the feds. Three years before this shit, right? So it's like, 
We got to get them the game ahead of time so they can see the shit coming up the road. Because if we don't give it to them before they get to the, up the road, they can't say somebody didn't tell them. But if we tell them, they can say somebody told them. And we got to have reference points. And there are a lot of reference points, but I think they go back to that prior conversation. Sometimes they're given a bag and then not knowing what to do with that bag, they go and trick their money off. So then what do I invest into? They don't come in until the maturity come in. And sometimes the maturity don't come in until they're 50. So now what? Between 23 and 50, it's a lot of banging your head against the wall and fucking up. Some, some cats lose their life by, you know, knocking a motherfucker off or having to sit down a long period of time. And now what you gonna do? Your expression gonna be, hey man, like, oh man, I wish I was out. But then now, also, a lot of the cats end and up snitching. So that's, some, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole other piece, but that's, you know what I'm saying? That's 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 my take, bro. And uh, I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, My, my two cents on it is, I agree with both of y'all. Um, well, definitely, for real, for real, I'm happy that they, you know, not in the same type of situations that we was in, but they are, though. And I think that's part of the problem because half of the niggas is on the same type of time we was all. The other half is motherfucking dancing and shit. Yeah. And I think them niggas, that, that's off what we was off, not only is they awful we was off, but they awful we was off with no proper guidance and all types of fucking drugs we ain't had. Whew. So now they doing a whole bunch of nut shit out here and them dancing motherfuckers over there. Oh, you you a sweet Vic. Yeah. You pretty as hell over there. Let me get that. And since they didn't have a fucking proper guidance, right? Now they just lighting shit up for no reason. Now I ain't gonna get too much into names and all that shit. Uh, but all of these, all of these motherfuckers dying out here, man. All of these, all of these young motherfuckers. That 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 whole. Again, I'm not. I'm not gonna get into all of the fucking names. Uh, we uh, know who they are. We know who they are. That shit hurt, bro. You know what I'm saying? And and, and these motherfuckers got so much talent. They had so much to give to the fucking world. Mm-hmm. But they, but they, but they lives is 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 fucking is gone because. Even when I was coming up, I was born in fucking 82, bro. Yeah. I still had niggas like, yo, the fuck is you doing? Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what fucking type of time is you on, man? Cut that shit the fuck out. Somebody was going to check me if I did some nut shit. It's, it's, it's 17-year-old OGs out here. Yeah, that's real. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, the, where the fuck they get their game from? This shit nutty as fuck to me, bro. Yeah. He's got to turn on his head. Real shit. I, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to do or, or how the fuck we fix it. Um not, but, it, but that shit that, that shit bothers me though. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna slide in on that one, man, because what I noticed, I spend a, I spend a little time up in the shop, you know what I'm saying? And then being where I'm from, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I noticed the case for pretty much anywhere we gonna be at. Mm-hmm. I'm saying these young niggas is really going off of the body count. They get they get stained off that shit in their hood. And so the lack of guidance, you know what I'm saying, in the in the in the in the urge for wanting power, you know what I'm saying? Because I did time with a lot of these situations that came out where you see homies is like, man, what I do to get up, what I do to get, and they are, they, they thirsty. You know what I'm saying? They thirsty for that, just trying to get up and stain. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And ain't no God. It's like, man, pump your brakes, dog. You know what I'm saying? Say that. You got the right mind frame because the guy's waking up. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come a time where that violence got to be issued out to certain individuals, but it's not that one right there. So chill out. Proper hey. discretion. You gotta have discretion and discernment. You gotta have wisdom with this shit. Nah, that's real. I think that's a. I feel like that's a real dialogue or discussion because 
I think about that testosterone. That shit be heavy, bro. Like, bro. I remember, I, I remember times wanting to knock a motherfucker off in college on some stupid shit because a motherfucker said something. Like, we was on some dumb shit. Like, it, I realized something as far as like the rage that I had from from Memphis and not realizing how much rage I had inside of me until I got down to Atlanta and I go to the club and a motherfucker just stepped on my on my foot. Dog, I had raised up and I was ready to knock his head off. But it was like, bro, you in a whole nother city. Bro, I had apologized. And I ain't even, you know what I'm saying? I ain't even think about it until like I'm riding to the house. Like, damn, bro. I, I you know, I my heart goes out to a lot of these young cats because I'm like 15 seconds of thinking. It get you jammed up your whole life. Get you jammed up. So my my OG, my uncle, he said, uh. The time, he said, nephew, the time to think is always right now. So before I go do some dumb shit, bro, I'll be like, the time to think is always right now. Hey, bro, and for real, for real, just, just, let me tap in on that shit, bro. I, that, that shit just made me think about the other day when, when you hit my line and I was like, yo, I'm happy as hell you called me. You yeah. don't know what situation I'm talking about yeah. because that, that, that shit would have been so fucking stupid, but shit, 10... 15 years ago, that shit would have went different uh, if either one of us was in that situation. Uh, because like you said, you moved from Memphis to Atlanta. When I moved from Newark, I went to school in Baltimore. Uh, no, it was, you know I, what I'm saying? So I went from a nut-ass situation to another nut-ass situation. You was a nutty buddy. Hey, okay, bro, call it what you want, but I was, I, nigga, I'm TTG, bro. And mm-hmm. I wake up on ready set. All I need is fucking go. Mm-hmm. A mother do motherfucker do anything to me, bro. I'm, I'm on it. Mm-hmm. And I'm happy as hell that I had enough of strength mm-hmm. to not put myself in a situation at such a fucking young age because they don't give a fuck when it's us if our brains ain't fully formed yet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? These nut ass niggas gonna, gonna, gonna take Buddy to McDonald's if he shoots some whole shit up. Mm-hmm. If he's 17, even 18 years old, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if it's us, they we not gonna get that same treatment. Nah, that's real, bro. That's and that and that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I think about DG too, man, because he 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 did a video the other other day when he was saying he was he was shed some tears because when he brought he he paid for his mom not to work, you know what I'm saying, not to have to he retired his mom. Right. And I'm like, you know, we the emotional fortitude of who we are, that shit don't get addressed until we get older. You know what I'm saying? Like, the first time I ever saw my pops shed a tear was like two years, two two or three years ago when my auntie passed. I dig it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, like, I it made me think about shit. I, you know, I hug the kids or whatever. I tell them I love them. But it's like, a lot of times, like, nah, get your ass up and keep going, man. Get off that shit. I remember even telling my daughter that one time. My home was like, hey, man, why you? I said, because the girl was running in some fucking samples. I told her, stop running. She fell and bust her knee up. I put, I got her some dirt. I put some dirt on that wound. I told her to get her ass up. Because that, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, we do need to, to, to be able to express. But it's like, I think the, the question is, how do we communicate? And how do we go about communicating? Because in Memphis, we may, I like, I'd be like, what up, fool? What up, my nigga? Like, that's how we communicate. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll say something else. In Detroit, what up, though? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's learning, it's learning to maneuver, and it's only until you learn to shape. And I learned a lot in isolation, being isolated from certain shit. That shit made me better. It made me a better person, bro. You want to tap in, Wolf? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm listening, man. Cause nah. when bro get feeling, but yeah, though. Hey, no, nah, um, I, I wanted to tap in too, bro. Like, I, I, I definitely get where you coming from because real shit. Um, I ain't, I ain't meet my father until I was, uh, I think maybe thirteen. Mm. And the only reason I met him is because he got locked up in Georgia and uh, in Valdosta. 
and they was about to give him the motherfucking death penalty. And um, well, it was it was on the table, so they was like, uh, now nah, you, you need to go meet him. And I was like, man, fuck that nigga. I don't know that nigga. At 13 years old. And they was like, no, nah, because if you don't meet him and they, they take him out of here, later in life, you might feel different about this shit. Mm-hmm. So we want you to at least have this opportunity. Oh, my, my shit was, fuck that nigga. Where the fuck he been? I ain't need that nigga for 13 years. Fuck, I'm gonna need him for later. And the and the and the, and the shit was so fucked up that I ain't want to fuck with him. I ain't want to fuck with my grandmother, my my paternal grandmother. I ain't want to fuck with nobody on that side because I ain't need them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Coming, I'm I'm not gonna go too far into that shit. But as you get older, you realize people are people. Mm-hmm. You you have to you have to understand that you don't know what that man was going through at the time, and and for me it was like bro you don't know who your mother was at that time you don't know what their relationship was at that time, yes, and you yes. only learn that when you start being in relationships yes. when when you become a parent when when you start doing shit out here mm-hmm. you know what I mean so that's real. we we have a relationship now yeah. you know what I'm saying. Um, now he'll he'll write me or, or he'll when he could borrow a jack he'll tap in with me, um, but but that shit it was really really important. But it took me a long time to learn. I was an angry ass kid for so many fucking reasons, bro. And um, so so you saying that you got to learn how to communicate with your children? Yeah. Because I, I used to talk to my daughter. And I used to be like, fuck out! I was talking to her like she was a grown man. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, but I had to finally understand, you know, that little girl, you're responsible for her. You're her protection. You you, you need to insulate her from the rest of the fucking world. Mm -hmm. The fuck is you doing, nigga? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but it took a minute for me and I didn't really understand that I was doing that until I sat back and had to really have a, a real sit down with myself. Man, that's cold, bro. That's like that. That man, that fucking um, I I like to say in home banking before I say post Trump. You know what I'm saying? Because like that's some shit I had thought about when I was a little kid. Like that, you an accountant, nigga. We, I got forty first cousins on just your side. I got another forty or fifty on my on my mom's side. Hey, nigga, let's play goddamn Monopoly. Nigga, you going to make all the money from us because you going to give us the game. I'm a young nigga saying this. So it's like, damn, that shit didn't go through. But here it is, a motherfucker with tattoos on his goddamn face. He got one that say ABC, Adversity Builds Character. And I see the motherfucker teaching the kids how to shoot guns. He talking some financial literacy before the board game even fucking come out. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's... the shit just struck a fucking nerve, bro. And I'm like, hey, bro, I got to, that man ain't on some, bro. And to see that a certain amount of people were only doing the work. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then he, t- you turn this shit into a boy game. And I was one of them motherfuckers like, bro, you, you got, you a dog. Matter of fact, you a wolf, nigga. Like, you want some major shit. Oh, yeah, because that nigga is not domesticated. Nah. You wow, you're not fucking domesticated, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I later found out like my my pops was uh he was always a rebel. I didn't, I'm trying to figure out why the fuck do I see like I see and I don't never fit into no box. My niggas going left, I'm going right. My niggas going right, I'm going left. Like, and not intentionally. Now you it know? was intentionally, you just didn't know it at the time. I didn't know it at the time. I ain't know the out like nigga, you an outlaw. That's just you, that's just your character. Like. Nigga, I entertain myself. Like my son was saying one day, hey, dad, you lonely. He said, nigga, fuck you. I ain't lonely. I'd nigga. never be fucking lonely a day in my life. I said, listen, bro, like, matter of fact, I got a sense of peace on myself. I said, if I can sit here and I ain't got to think, of, I ain't got to worry about what other people thinking, they, they show up all the down comments, like, bro, I'm straight. I'm good. But that, 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 that Derek Grace dude, like, 
he when he came with that kid gloves and how he handled his situations, big shit. And certain things, man, that shit helped me out with a situation last year with my own situation with my kids, uh, mom, where it's like, oh, focus on myself, and not only myself, but not just this relationship, but how I handle every relationship with this information on the kid gloves. And this was before I, I saw the post Trump. And I'm like, damn, bro, like, you got a post-Trump society? Oh, when I get my bread right, I got to get in the motherfucker. I got to get in the that, bro, because you definitely, you a, you a big part of that because you drop a lot of jewels in the uh, in the After Dark cause, which it's going to be some people that's going to hear this recording and they not going to even know what that is. But can you bring them up to speed on, because you're talking about the society, you're talking about Derek Grace, and you were, like I say, man, you was a voice in that community. Let, let Give us some more on that, bro. What is that? So, like, um, here it is. How I get with this motherfucker right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, um, um, I'm like, all right. I'm seeing this motherfucker. So, here go opportunity to get a post-Trump, post-Trump. And I'm like, I got a little bridge stack. And... From playing a board game, you know what I'm saying? Like, we've been playing that shit for three years. And, I, and the other day, I finally, playing with the kids, I, we finally beat the game as a collector. We actually beat the system. So that made me think about one of my homegirls. She was like, I'm going to invest in whatever you got going on. Here go 100. I'm like, cool. I put that shit in the post-Trump. And I had money sitting to the side. I'm like, I'm going to go and invest into the post-Trump society. And this is how I'm going to get in. I got in, I think, right when Re- Reza Islam was speaking. You know what I'm saying? Or like it was it was somebody right before him. Shout out to Reza Islam. Real. So I, I'm like, I'm like, all right, bro, I don't know what the fuck is set up. So, you know, you get on the, on the app and shit, on the Kajabi, and you get the emails, and I'm like, all right, well, let me tap into the post-Trump society. I'm like, yeah, these speakers and shit, they cool, but fuck them. It's the people in this motherfucker. So one night I, I I chime in. I think it's like, I think I wake up at four in the morning or some shit. And I wake up on my sleep because I just got the shit on my phone just playing. I'm like, I'm hearing some niggas chattering and talking. It's like, man, get up. So the homie, um, Authentic Life, he, he talking to shit because it's quiet. I wake up on my sleep. This motherfucker say so, and and the parallel of his grandfather, my grandfather was so strong. I'm like, you sure your granddad ain't my granddad, my nigga? Like you talking the same talk that my granddad used to talk to me. And then this dude Laquan get on there and Kelly on there. They talking about goddamn pains and they talking about crypto being tied to the pains and all kinds of other shit. And I'm like, then Laquan on there, he talking. And I'm here, I'm like, bro, why you ain't confident in yourself? And you saying, like, no, nah, bro, like, I ain't finna let you go out like that, bro. No, nah, you can't say that shit. Bro, you got game that I ain't got. You got some game that's for the fucking table. And I'm like, you know, I'm doing this out of pure. I'm, I'm learning that it's overflow for me now. But I'm like, bro, I ain't pulling from no empty place no more. I'm like, no, nah, bro, like, we don't do that talk where I'm from. Like, all my youngest, I be like, Ain't no such thing as try. You either gonna do or you gonna not do. And you got enough game and, and experience in life to give, to get in the in the in the express and the apply. So motherfucker, you gotta, do it. You gotta do it. I ain't trying to cut you off. So you mean that's you mean that's where that we not trying came from? That's the origin of that don't say to try in the after dark. Yeah, because it's like yeah, real shit. You, and real talk, the, the day he talking about. I remember that day because that was the first day I ever spoke in the motherfucking, in the society. That's I told big. you this shit earlier, bro. It was him and John on there. Shout out to Authentic Life Clothing. If, if y'all don't know who he is, go check him out. Yeah, that's the, but that's but the that was uh that was the first time I met Ari and John. Mm-hmm. Me and, because me and Ari, I think we started right around like a, like a week apart from each other. Yeah. And um, we was all in there, and I was talking about you. Know, I got this degree, I got that degree, but I feel like I mean, it's shit for nothing. I'm mad as hell I even did that shit. Like, it's so stupid, sad. They like, bro, 
you understand what we could do? Like, if you just link up with certain niggas in here, now we could walk in the door with you, and you got the degree, so now we validated. They got to fucking listen. Right. And it, it, I ain't never have no, like, I, I was never, you know what I mean, like, uh, what the fuck am I trying to say? Like, I, I, was, I never had no self-doubt in me. I was just fucking aggravated at my situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, y'all did all that fucking work. I took out all them fucking loans. I did all of that bullshit. And now I'm still here working for motherfuckers, not making no money, really. I mean, I'm doing I'm paying my bills and shit, but what the fuck is, I mean, $20 an hour? I mean, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Hey. But now, two months later, Come look on. at this shit right here. Nigga, I told my job, fuck off. Yeah. I'm, I'm out here doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm about to tell my fuck off too. Just cause like I know I I already understood the value. You mm-hmm. did what I'm saying, but the more that I go on, like I tell my folks, like I want for my my brother what I want for myself. That's a fact. You did what I'm saying. So if I got something going on and I know that, all right, bro, you know how to do this. Why am I not gonna come bring you the bag in order for you to go up? You know what I'm saying? And you ain't, you got to think like, you ain't even in the same city. And I'm like, hey, man, I can, I can check. I can call Quan. I can call Bang. I, you know what I'm saying? I can call John. Even to a point, like the homie that's in Florida, Daniel, with the work deal, Dream Create. It's like. Absolutely. Shout out to the homie Daniel. I said, bro, this is a fucking mantra, bro. Like, do you not realize he did? He was like, I never had anybody wear my shirt. Or, or, or give me that game right there to, to help me put some in a whole different mind space to where I was like, bro, the homie that I cut, he was the one that did the T.I. album that filmed that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, you, I don't never know who I'm going to come across. I don't, know, I don't know the 10 people that you know that's going to listen to something that I got or that's going to turn, you know what I'm saying? Or bang, like, bang got some shit he won't do. I'm like, bro, come on, bro, like, it ain't, ain't it ain't an amount it ain't a it ain't an amount of money that can that you can give me to say like like I feel like that post Trump shit is way worth more than what I paid for. Bro, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the fucking day, if everybody just understands, there's a lot of things in this world worth way more than money, and they free to do. If you got a homie that 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 got a product or a service was out here doing some shit, and you not liking the sharing they shit. Then fuck off. That's real. You ain't I, that person, friend. I had to tell my I had to tell my homeboy that I said, bro, because he was we was going back and forth. Cause for the last 20 fucking years, I was like, hey, bro, let's say five dollars a week. It's 20 of us, bro. Let's say or, or five dollars a month. It's 20 of us. That's a hundred dollars. Nah, bro. We, 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 we. I'm like, all right. The motherfucker started talking that vaccine shit. Oh, yeah, what's up? We, 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 we share information. Da, 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 we, we, we. Didn't really move on that. Niggas, niggas got into the stock market and shit. But I had to tell one of the homies, I was like, look, bro, I ain't mad at you motherfuckers. I'm going to tell you why. When I started getting into the garden and I found a sense of peace, it's nothing that a motherfucker can say or do that's going to fuck with me, bro. I said, when you go and you take a seed and you plant it, plant it in the ground, right, and it take water, it take the, uh, the germination to grab a hold of that seed, it takes the sunlight. It takes stepping away. It takes like leaving that shit alone. I said, bro, I got a sense of peace. You, you, you miss, you misinformed by what I'm saying. I'm not worried about what you niggas doing. You niggas gonna do what you do, regardless of whatever I say or whatever I do. But if I'm doing what I'm doing and I got major results, if you don't want to do it and somebody else do, I'm just gonna take my seed and plant it over here and watch it get nurtured and do what it do. And that's what's been going on. That's all that's been going on. You know what I'm saying? From what, like, from you even checking out the podcast, for you to even be doing the work that you're doing, I do the same thing when I interview my people. Because you should. Yeah, why not? That's you're supposed to. That's, gonna that's make, your job. That's going to make me better, right? Exactly. Just like, just like Bang, like Bang got his book, and he said he need me to be a, a, a certain voice of this character. Bro, you don't, I don't, Nikki. Matter of fact, I pay you for being being a goddamn character. You don't don't give me no money, bro. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. We we gonna speak about this shit after this goddamn shit go off. We all about to pay each other. 
and yeah. write that bitch off at the end of the year. You dig what I'm saying? And I, real quick, real quick, yeah, let's anybody, make that shit. That's, anybody that's listening to the recording and you not a part of the uh, post-Trump secret society, I'm going to promote that you do that. And it's bigger than what you probably seen on Brother Derek Grace's uh, page, on his right. IG page, because you got a whole community. And he didn't say this on his lives and everything. You know what I'm saying? That true enough, we got guest speakers that come in and drop heavy shit, like stupid ass game. Right. But I bar, and even a bigger bar for me, and what set the standard for the shit is the community that's attached to it. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all not a part of that, you definitely want to go check it out and try to get involved. And you can find more individuals like this brother we got tonight, Ari the Architect. And no, we're not going to equate nobody to his status, but you got a lot of heavy hitters in there. You know what I'm saying? So he's one of the the many leaders that we able to get with and collaborate. And it's basically a think tank, man. So y'all need to check in. I just want to drop that on y'all. It was was fucking addictive, bro. I ain't, ain't, it's like, you know, uh, I got a cousin that I just met at 40, bro. And he a Raiders fan just like me. You know what I'm saying? It's like goddamn Raiders, nigga. You said what? <laughs> bang bang niner gang, nigga. Oh, I, thought you, I thought you were about to say you a Jets fan. You look like no, a get Jets. the fuck out of here, nigga. Ain't nobody who Jets fan. Niner <laughs> gang, nigga. I'm fucking with you, dog. We we, we Bay brothers, all right. Bay area brothers, bro. All right, we're gonna Big leave facts. it. We're gonna leave it alone. We're gonna leave it alone. No, uh, 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 what I was saying, but no, the, the, it was it was a space of overflowing, man, for me to where it's like. I'm meeting all my cousins for the first time. You know what I'm saying? And now it's like me meeting them, this shit is like, it's making my daily journey that much easier when I'm in the shop. And I'm like, man, I can't wait till I tap in to get on a Zoom call. Now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, I'm not tapping in all the time, but like when I do tap in, I get something every time. Whether that's a new person that's, that's joining or if there's somebody that hasn't been on, that I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm seeing, and it's just like, man, it's 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 major, bro. It's it's major. Real Chuck, um, just to just to jump off what you just said, bro. The the first time uh I ever hopped on, it was for the first free masterclass, right? Uh-huh. And I think it was a Thursday night okay. that that shit jumped off. I stayed on that Zoom link. Until Sunday morning, until four o'clock in the morning, from oh. a Thursday to Sunday, and the oh. shit that I was hearing, oh yeah, was so fucking crazy. I was like, "Oh no, nah, I need in. I need to fuck in." Yeah. Soon as I got my little bread up, I cashed in. I see. Real shit. So no, I'm saying that shit real, bro. Real talk, and just like you said. Like, the speakers is dope. The speakers is cool. They drop a lot of game. But it's the relationships that you build organically within the, especially in that after dark. A lot of people don't take advantage of that after dark. We ain't about to make this a goddamn Derek Grace motherfucking uh, podcast or documentary or no shit like that, you feel me? But we can't can't deny what what the man, he brought this whole thing together. That's how we all know each other. You dig what I'm saying? So we can't not shout the bro out. You feel me? Yeah. You got, I mean, you gotta get you gotta get the roses while you, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's one thing that we don't do in our community. We don't get a roses while we're alive, bro. We wait till a motherfucker flatline. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? A, a lot of motherfuckers yeah. be feeling some type of way. Oh, he got too much money. Well, I need some money too. He got money already. So yeah. the fuck what? That's his money. That's for him. Mm-hmm. Don't get what the fuck is for you. Yeah. It's shit that's for you out here. Yeah. And that's what the fuck I had to realize, man. Yeah. I was so busy, like, worried about, oh, I went to school and now I owe this money. I got to do this. I got to do that. And you know the dopest shit ever, bro? When I quit my job, she just looked at me and said, hey, bro, fuck it. You got a plan, bro. I know you do because you don't do shit without no plan. No. You're going to go ahead and get that bag. So go ahead and get that bag. It's bad, man. That's what this shit. That's what this shit doing. Like, I think about the um, that that, that Black Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Dog, I was I was moving some merch at like twenty thirty dollars at one point in time, 
Nobody wanted to fuck with. Me. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, everybody mashing up on it now. Raise the price and everything. They want to fuck with it now. Even even one point, the fucking reels. You know what I'm saying? Facts. I don't know. I'm just I just look at that shit as practice. Cause they like, and nobody giving me no outline or blueprint to say, hey, do the reels like this. I just get on there and just trying some shit. You know what I'm saying? But it started making me think like, all right, let me be intentional with what I'm saying and what I'm doing. So it's like. If you don't get something from one of them, you're going to get something from the next one. And then if you don't get something, like, motherfucker, did sign, I did sign language. I saw you do that shit, too. I've seen it. I've you know, seen it. And I'm, and I'm talking, like, this mean war. This mean, I know. you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, damn, women crush wins. You know what I'm saying? Like, a chick at work with me, she's a devil. She knows sign language. I told her, go and start your YouTube page. Teaching sign language. So you can get that bad. So if now if I learn how to communicate with you, I'm I'm di- what they say, stay dangerous. We 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 diversifying skill sets. Why not? And portfolios. If you diversify your skill set and your portfolio, they can't do shit with you. No and matter we, what happens, they can't we, take your skill set. Yeah, and we changing that. We changing that shit up like my OG said. And we the fucking trendsetters. Yup, and we yeah. the trendsetters. My OG said, iron don't sharpen iron. Only a stone can. You dig what I'm saying? Because I'm not here to dull your dull your light out. I'm here, I'm here to go get the wood and make that fire, you know what I'm saying? Blaze. Blaze to where the niggas I know in California that fuck with me. Man, check this shit out. The niggas in Texas that know this shit. Man, check. The niggas that's in the UK that know this shit. Man, check this shit out. Stoke the fucking furnace, bro. No, uh, I, I know you know this quote. I don't want to change with the times. I want to change the times. Hey man, I was like, that blew my fucking mind, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because that means that I was relevant when I first became a part of the game. Mm-hmm. I was relevant. I'm relevant to this day. You know what I'm saying? Who you are. And I'm gonna stay relevant down the line because. I'm impacting culture, meaning that, hey, authentic life. Let me be a consultant to your brand, right? Let me be a brand ambassador too, meaning like, I'm the Dos Equis nigga, dog. Use me for that shit. <laughs> I'm the nigga brand You know what I'm saying? So authentic life, what's your culture? What does authentic mean to you? Not what it mean to me, because I can't, this ain't my shit. Oh, this ain't enough. It's your child, brother. We, I, I, we, had, a, we had at least one question on IG for you. Hold on, bro. Okay. Because I gotta get ready to take these youngins too. And like um, we yeah, all right, yeah. So we just we just gonna answer this one more last question. We're gonna get you up out of here. Bang bang. <laughs> yes, sir, sir. Man, we really appreciate this, man. Absolutely, bro. Uh, now this this this, this one, been one one hell of a first interview, and one hell mm-hmm. of a first episode. Yeah, yeah. I like I like to learn about. You know what I'm saying. I'm glad I got a chance to hear y'all background too. You know what I'm saying. Like the audience need it, bro. That's 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 monstrous, bro. All right, since we we running short on time, we just gonna do uh this one last. Well, how, how many minutes you got? Give me that, and I can figure out how we gonna finish this up. I like that. I got ten more minutes. That's ten cool. minutes. Okay. Yeah. Um, talk to me about how you feel about stocks and coding for children. Mm. Man, so I start with the um with the coding. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's a video that I've been I've been sending out. About uh, I kind of kind of piggyback off of Grace with that with that robot with the robotics company that they got, and now my son and my son is doing coding full time. My daughter is working into that that field too, but more so from an artistic standpoint. With the with the coding, you work in the mind and transition into a point where everything is done from the fucking computer. 
So why not introduce your child? If they play games, learn how to develop a game, meaning that what you can, what you consume can help you become a great producer. That's first and foremost. What you consume will help you become a great producer. And then coding, you got mathematics. You got language and literature that you got to learn. Why not show the kids or the children how they can impact the, you know, their lives and their culture and Im impact the adults that's older than them that don't know how to function and use the goddamn computer or the goddamn financial sector with these damn apps through the code. You know what I'm saying? Then when it comes to the stock market, let's say you educate a child on the stock market, right? And I'm I'm 30 learning about the stocks. But they they 10 learning about the stock market or they five. So we got a kid that's playing basketball. He he feel like he's gonna be the next LeBron James. You know what I'm saying? But he like Nikes. Come here, little fucker. Come here. Come here. <laughs> you see this shoe price? This shoe costs two hundred dollars. How you gonna pay for that shoe? Right. All right, here you go. Why don't you go? Why don't we figure out a way to make some money and invest in the Nike and buy you these shoes? Just like I did with my son. Hey, all right, son, come here. You want some joints? My folks weren't going to buy you no joints. And it's coming up in my book, Kyle Got Vision. Hey, you want some joints? You're going to have to come work at the shop. You're going to have to come make some money. I'm going to invest part of my money into the stock market. And you gonna invest in it too. So now you come in and work for a couple of days. All I want is five dollars every day that you work. You might make fifty dollars. You gonna keep forty five. You give me five, and we go take that money. I go sell some shares of stock that I made some money on, and I invest my money. You invest yours, and we get the stock for sixty dollars. And now that shit worth one hundred forty five dollars. You tell me that child is gonna continuously ask me, "Hey man, how did how that stock do?" You are owner of a company at 10. So at 20, if you're the owner of a company of 20 companies now, at 20, I've done my job. Now you get money that when you when you graduate from high school or college, you got this bread. Now you're teaching them financial literacy and taking it back to the code, like I told my son. You 12. At 15, motherfucker, you got to own a goddamn GameStop. So when you want a PlayStation 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you walk in there, you grab the game, you grab whatever games you want, and you go home. And if they ask you a question, you show them your name and you walk out that motherfucker. Now what? Hey, yo, that shit's super heavy, right? Another thing, um, you can get kids credit cards. Like, they, they don't tell you this at these credit card companies. And, and I mean, not not even like under you as an authorized user. You can get your kids a credit card yeah. in their name under their social. So by the time they're 18, their credit is retarded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, my daughter they don't like, tell you this shit. I can get my daughter like that. Three. And, and that, that, that's what I'm talking about. So more people need to be aware of this situation. Go ahead and do this for their kids. But and also, if you got an LLC, S Corp, C Corp, whatever, Put your kids on payroll yeah. and pay them. Let them get taxes. And, then, and you and you can write that shit off too. And come on, man. Y'all need to start working smarter, not hard out here. And I, will, and I will add fintech, like financial literacy and then the technology too. I will add that on the on the on the table. Cause if we if we look at things, if we teaching them the same shit that we learned going going forward, we gonna be behind. If if I if I expect the school system to do the shit, man, fuck them. That's why I doing a doing a 21 day juice fast, I came up with an idea called fuck school. And I'm not saying fuck education, I'm saying fuck school. Fuck school. Exactly. Because as it as it's currently constituted. Yeah, because it's dead. Exactly. So now, co college is dead. The way the university uh system structure is, is all dead. Exactly. Apparently, bro, we're going to have to do a part two to this. I don't have no problem with that. We're we going to have to do a part two to this. I only got halfway through my list, bro. Uh, I know you got to go. I ain't going to hold you up. We're going to have to do a part two to this shit. 
cool, but give Apparently, me another... Ari the Architect got too much information for one person. Right, give me another question, bro. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to leave you, you know what I'm saying, like that. We uh, def- that, that was actually going to be my next question. You keep transitioning into the shit that I'm transitioning into before I get to it. That's how well I studied your ass. That's how, but that's how Rob did me, bro. Real shit. What's happening? Go ahead and talk about that juice fast. Or talk about that uh, 21 or, or the seven-day fast you did. Whichever oh. one. Because I saw you with salad vegan over there, too. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 love, man. So like, you, ain't th- you ain't think I was no one-trick pony. I saw you with salad vegan, too. <laughs> I just went and picked up some food. So, like, the 21-day juice fast, it's like, um, I can't think of bro name. The Black Panther. I can't think of his name. Chad with Bo. Okay, got you. Got you, got you. So, my thing was... I just wanted to honor him, you know what I'm saying, by doing a 21 day juice fast because of what I saw, the representation of Black Panther and the different connections that it had and the symbolism that I saw. So I was like, you know, it was also a connection for me because my uncles in my 20s, prostate cancer. One of my uncles used to get fucked up on the liquor. This nigga had two accidents within 10 minutes from each other on the same street. I'm like, damn. Nigga, that ain't a rest you before you. Fuck it. Then, um, you know, just just liver problems. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, in my 20s, I had my elder, Balewa, which is Salah Vegan's father. When he introduced me into, like, being vegan and cayenne pepper and all that shit, that shit just, like, that shit started working my mind when I can go out and I can find food and shit and I can come back and I can turn it into this medicine, this real food. So... Like, going through the 21-day juice fast, the first couple of days was, like, kind of hard. It was, it was, it was, it was mind off and it was shifting. But as I got on through that first week, man, that first week was, like, I didn't, I didn't, I had cravings of shit, like, a chopped shoulder sandwich. I had called my dad, like, hey, nigga, um, I need you to go get a, a Boston Buttox, nigga. You got to keep me. <laughs> Boston butt nigga. Look, I ain't had no beef. I mean, I ain't had no beef, no pork in like 15 years. I'm like, I need a chop shoulder sounds with some slaw on that bitch. I need you to, I need you to stay. Oh, oh, you talking spicy. Yeah. And I'm like, it just let me know that I was still, I had some toxins in my body that I had to get rid of. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, it also showed me like, you don't really need food like you wanted. That's more of some shit that you craving. And you can drink some water and it'll, it'll chill that, that thought. And I wound up losing weight too. And it, it brought about a focus on a mental one. I'm like, I'm, I'm having a cut hair. I'm at Amazon and I'm learning systems and shit. So it's like, I'm focused like a motherfucker. Like, and then other ideas coming through. And I'm just like, damn, bro. Like, oh, I'm reading two books and all kinds of shit. Like I read that book, Who Stole My Pension, which is like a Bible. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about the pension and shit. You know what I'm saying? And, Get into the to the to the post Trump society, and it's like it's just so much beautiful shit going on. We did a photo shoot for the shop. The pictures came out nice. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I just tap I just tapped into the essence and the core of what I want to do going forward, and which is dominating the next decade. And I felt like that juice fast was dominating for me because I'm drinking water, I'm doing smoothies, I'm doing soups. I'm juicing, and it's like, I feel so much better, man. And it give you clarity. Facts. I'm talking about, I could have gone for 30 days and wouldn't have had no problems with it. I don't even know how long I did. I did a juice fast too, man, but I lost, we lost track. We we did it as a group, man. It was probably like six of us, man. Mm-hmm. We lost track, man, but that that brought my focus into a whole nother alignment. Yeah, and it, and it, it made me think about, because the, the podcast that I do with Salad Vegan is called Kiss, which her dad came up with, which is Keep It Seed Simple. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it made it where I'm like, damn, I do a juice fast, and I got more energy than I had by eating this, this meat. It's like, damn, I'm telling my brother, like, because he was asking me 15 years ago, like, damn, why you don't eat no meat no more? I'm like, I'm eating something dead, and I'm not getting real energy from it. But I can go eat a plant and get some life from this motherfucker. And real Chuck, it's been it's been medically proven that that animal protein is the number one cause of multiple types of cancer, oh. multiple types of all types of other autoimmune diseases, 
uh, multiple types of, of motherfucking, um, all types of different shit, bro. I, I'm not a, I'm not a fucking doctor. I ain't got no list of this shit right here. But it's, it's the cause of so much shit that's wrong, and especially wrong in our community with us. That's the segment for the homie spin. We're going to have to get the homie spin. Yeah. Uh, hey, bro, big I, shit. Yeah. He's definitely going to have to get big spin on it. And to, and to add to that, when my son was born, my OG was like, when you cut the umbilical cord, you know what I'm saying? Let that bitch stop beating. Let that pulse stop beating. You know what I'm saying? It's like shit. Take some cayenne pepper and put it on his neighbor and it's gonna heal. What? You switched off the shit. Hey, 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 bro, what you know about that? Um, and my, my homie Trash Vegan put me up on this the African bird pepper. What's that? Listen, spice. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit more potent than that cayenne. Just a little taste. Mmm, cause see, like I do, I put some some cayenne in my orange juice. I had told my homegirl, yo, ear, nose, and throat connect. Right. So if you ever if you ever feel that pressure, hey, drink that. Get a glass, half a tablespoon, all of that shit gonna ruin. It is gonna that same day you are gonna be straight. And I told my homegirl that she was fucked up for like two weeks. Did that shit? She was like, man, that knocked that shit straight out. I was like, this why I do what I do. Somebody oh, shit. Tra- wow. Trash Vegan told me he take he said um make you a ginger shot every morning, yeah. but um you ginger it real simple ginger, yeah. lemon, huh. and some of that motherfucking pepper, yeah. and then a little bit of Pedialyte. Okay, just for the electrolytes and then a little taste of sweetness. Like I mean, just to mix all of that shit in every day. Damn. That's how I wake up in the morning. Real Yo, shit. Real shit. Damn, bro, this shit, man. Yeah, we definitely gonna have to do a part two, man. I got. We it. gonna have to. We gonna oh. have to. Yeah, so we, we gonna we gonna chop this thing up and give it to the people. But you know yeah. what I might do? I'm gonna just throw out the behind the scenes, like the, the shit I do on the cutting room floor. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw the oops and shit out there for them. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm gonna get the actual episode. Hey. Real, real right for him, and then we gonna go ahead and get to him. Hey. Um, but hey, Brody, for real, for real, we definitely appreciate you. Go ahead before you tap out. Uh, give us the name of your podcast where we can find your music, mm-hmm. the address to the barber shop, and uh, any other places that we can tap in with you. All right. Um, I start with the with the uh, I start with the album. The album is uh the Manefa Project. Oh, uh, you can find me on iTunes and any 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 playlist that you want. Or not, not playlist, but any app that you want. Any, any, any streaming platform. Streaming platform under Ari Hotep, A R I H O T E P. Um, you will find my basketball poem and a single that I did. And I got more music coming out, uh, which is a project called Abundance that I'm working on right now. The homie of uh, Greatness is working on it with me. He gonna be the executive producer. You said official greatness. Official greatness. Yeah. Official greatness and Alex Motivate is also uh currently not not to cut you off, Brody. Um, they they working on our official motherfucking thing. So I don't know if I told you that, Wolf. Uh, oh, but they dude. they they collabing on that damn thing. Damn. Um, two heavy hitters yeah. collabing on that thing, and they gonna be in here in a couple of weeks. But um, go ahead, bro. Not to cut you oh. off. I'm sorry. Oh, Ari Hotel. You can find me on Facebook on the Ari Hotel too. Um, as far as you know, if anybody want to follow me, R the Architect on Instagram, on LinkedIn. Um, what else am I on? Tick, I'm on TikTok. I ain't doing no motherfucking dances though. I will. I get on there, I act a goddamn fool with some shit, but I ain't. I got a two and three stuff for your ass and a twelve. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get on there and fuck with my daughter and shit, but I ain't yeah. fucking around with y'all niggas though. I got. I'm on uh, Twitter as well under HWP Media. H HW underscore Media, which is my uh my media company that I got going. So, you know what I'm saying? We're just just doing some different stuff. Was it one more one more piece? Oh, the, the barbershop. Yeah, the barbershop. Yeah. If, you went, if you're in Atlanta, tap in with them. Yeah, if you're in Atlanta, you can hit me in the DM or uh, it's on Veterans Memorial, 1400 Veterans Memorial Southeast. Uh, just holler at me. Holler at me. You know what I'm saying? And, man, we can definitely make something happen. I need more clients coming in anyway, man. Right? Spend that chair. And tune into the podcast more than a haircut podcast on YouTube, as well as on Anchor on uh the iTunes app, shit, Spotify, iTunes, Spotify, uh, uh, 
Google got some shit out there. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of shit, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all know the streaming platforms. Whatever streaming platforms you want, go check him out. I got a chance to get on my homegirl. I got a cameo on my homegirl movie called New Year New Us. So if y'all get a chance, check that out. And that's on the app called Tubi or um Tubi Amazon. is free too. Tubi is super free. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, it's a dope ass movie, man. She's uh she did my music video, uh, some of my music videos back in the day. So um she's dope, dope um uh, videographer. I ain't gonna even say female. She's a she gonna be something to reckon with in his in his film game. I guarantee it, bro. I'm the first one to say it. But he got some classic material, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, wait to check that out, man. We really appreciate you too, bro. And salute to you and proud of everything that you're doing, man. It's it's inspiring, just motivating others. Keep doing that service, man. Gratitude, brother. I can't wait to share this and watch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, gratitude, bro. Yeah, because I know there's some gems that y'all share too, man. So, like, again, man, I appreciate, man. Like, to be it, like, this is one of my first interviews, seriously, over over a period of time where I'm like, hell, I ain't even talk about the film work I was doing for people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, my my, my background is very extensive, man. I ain't gonna lie. And it's just, it's so much from just last thing, the architect comes from both of my grandfathers, my my uh my father's father was a, a barber and a carpenter. And my mom's father did construction work. So that's the architect and he came from my brother, my little brother. You know what I'm saying? My grandmother was a poet. My other mother, my other grandmother did hair. So it's like, I don't know who, you know, I know she my grandmother was doing the writing, but it's just like, man, this shit come out of me. You know what I'm saying? My pops always been on fashion. He and accountant, mom, you know what I'm saying, business members, so. Hey man, I'm here, bro. I'm here to do what I do, man. Hey, hey listen, man. I, I was I was wondering what we was gonna do next week, but it looked like we doing this. <laughs> shit. Uh, we, 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 we gonna we gonna we gonna keep them going up for you, bro. Oh man, I'm, I do it again. I don't give a fuck. Man. I'm with it. I'm hey, with I, it. I, I, we we will be absolutely humble, bro. Great gratitude to you, man. Uh, and hey, like my boy Dan say, man, the the motto, man, and 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 I want to share with y'all is. Work, build, dream, create, and one of the um, one of the points I live by is um. Uh, yesterday I laid my foundation. Today you see my diamonds. Man. That's that's what I live by, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's uh, fear equals death. Be fearless, bro. That's 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 all I got, man. For real. Hey, bro. That that that's that's definitely what's up. That I think that's a great ass point to cut off at right now. Um, so shit, part two coming next week. We're gonna uh we're gonna have to tap in with your ass and figure out um what we're gonna do and how we gonna get that. But you already know what it is. Sure. Hopefully, uh you and the family be safe and all that, man. Take care. I'm sure I'll tap in with you sometime during the week. Love, man. All right, brody. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate Peace. you too, big homie. Peace, man. Why?